Okay, hopefully you've got the hang of those now. Let's move on. For exponential functions, we are going to use a lot of negative powers and zero powers. So let's make sure you understand the patterns that give us the results on these. So we're starting with a table of values. And on the top row, we have 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 0, 2 to the negative 1st, 2 to the negative 2nd, 2 to the negative 3rd, and 2 to the negative 4th. So we're moving down by 1 in the power with every column we move across the page. In the second row, we're evaluating that. So for example, we have 2 to the 4th is 16 in the second row. 2 to the 3rd is 8 in the second row. 2 squared is 4 in the second row. 2 to the 1st is 2 in the second row. And so then the question is, what is 2 to the 0? Well, if you look at the pattern that's forming, to get from 16 to 8, we're dividing by 2. And to get from 8 to 4, we're dividing by 2. And to get from 4 to 2, we're dividing by 2. So for every step we make across the table, we divide by 2. So to get to 2 to the 0, we would need to take 2 and divide it by 2. And if we do that, we end up with 2 over 2, which is 1. If we continue that pattern, then we would next do 1 divided by 2, which would be 1 half. And then 1 half divided by 2. If you think about that, if you think about it as like kind of a pie, half of a pie, if you divide that by 2, you'd have a quarter of a pie, right? And then if you divide that by 2, you'd have an eighth. So 2 to the negative third is 1 eighth. And if you divide that by 2, you'd have 1 sixteenth. And so 2 to the negative fourth is 1 sixteenth. Okay, so why don't you try the next two tables and see if you can fill those out correctly. Then take a stab at what you think the rules are and we'll come back and check. Okay, we're back. Uh, the first table has in the top row 3 to the 4th, 3 to the 3rd, 3 to the 2nd, and then that goes all the way down to 3 to the negative 4th, going down by 1 on the exponent each time. So we start 3 to the 4th, that's 81. 3 cubed is 27. 3 squared is 9. 3 to the 1st is 3. The pattern we have is that every time we divide by 3. So 81 divided by 3 is 27. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So the next one has to be 3 divided by 3, which is 1. And if we continue that, 1 divided by 3 is going to be 1 third. 1 third divided by 3 is 1 ninth. 1 ninth divided by 3 is, is 1 27th and 1 27th divided by 3 is 1 81st. Okay, in the last table, we again have two rows. In the top row, we start with negative 2 in parentheses to the fourth power, then negative 2 in parentheses to the third power, to the second power, to the first power, going all the way down to negative 2 in parentheses to the negative fourth power. Let's see how this one shapes up. So negative 2 to the fourth power I'm going to move my screen here just a little bit. That's like saying negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And so that's going to be a positive when it all comes out because we have an even number of negatives we're multiplying. And it's going to be a positive 16. Now, if we want to do negative 2 to the third power, we're doing negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's going to come out to be negative, and it's going to be negative 8. Negative 2 squared is going to come out negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. And then negative 2 to the first is going to be just negative 2. Now what's the pattern here? Well, every time we move across a column, we are dividing by negative 2. So 16 divided by negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So here we are. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is going to be positive 1. If we divide that by negative 2, we'll have negative 1 half. If 
we divide that by negative 2, positive 1 fourth, divide that by negative 2, negative 1 eighth, and divide that by negative 2, positive 1 sixteenth. So in this case, the numbers are bouncing back and forth between positive and negative as we move across the table. Hopefully you were able to look through these three tables and come up with a few rules. The first one we guessed at was x to the 0, and if you look at every case where we have something to the 0 power, you can see it always comes out to be 1, and that is in fact what the rule is. x to the 0 is always 1. As long as x isn't 0, that's kind of a little technicality you might get to in calculus. Okay, how about x to the negative first? Well, again, if we look in our three tables, 2 to the negative first was 1 half. 3 to the negative first was 1 third, negative 2 to the negative first was negative 1 half. So it sure looks like that number is moving to the denominator, and that is in fact what it does. x to the negative first is the same thing as 1 over x. If that doesn't look quite right for that last one, remember that negative 1 half is the same thing as 1 over negative 2. So it has in fact moved to the denominator. And then finally, what if you have x to the negative a? Well, x to the negative a, let's just pick one at random. Let's look at maybe 2 to the negative third. That's 1 eighth, which is the same thing as 1 over 2 cubed. And if we look at the next one, 3 to the negative third, that's 1 27th. And 1 27th is the same thing as 1 over 3 cubed. And likewise, negative 2 to the negative third gives us negative 1 eighth, and that is the same thing as 1 over left parentheses negative 2 right parentheses cubed. So in all of these cases we've moved the term to the denominator with 1 in the numerator, and so we could say that x to the negative a is 1 over x to the positive a, and that is in fact the rule. So to summarize our zero and negative exponent rules, assuming that x is not equal to zero and y is not equal to zero, we have that x to the zero is one, x to the negative a is the same thing as one over x to the positive a, one over x to the negative a is equal to x to the positive a, and finally, if we have x over y in parentheses, and that's to the negative a power, it's the same thing as writing it as a reciprocal, y over x, and all that's in parentheses, to the positive a power. Now, I like to call this little set of rules here the move me rules. And the number in the exponent is just crying out, move me! And once you move it, you make it positive because it's happy now. So, for example, x to the negative a, the negative a is crying out, move me. And when you move it to the denominator, it's happy and it's positive. 1 over x to the negative a, that x term in the denominator is crying out, move me. And when you move it up to the numerator or just outside of the fraction, which is the same thing as up to the numerator, then it becomes x to the positive a because it's happy now. And that third rule, x over y to the negative a, now both x and y are crying out, move me, because they have a negative exponent on them. And so as soon as you move them, you get to put a positive a on them. So y goes up, x goes down and you have a positive exponent after that. One of the easiest things to do with negative exponents is just to rewrite them as positive exponents, and you'll find that they're a lot easier to process. All right, well now this is where you give this a try. I've given you the rules, and we've talked about where they come from. Pause the video and give these six expressions a try. Simplify them. You don't have to put them through a calculator to evaluate them. Just rewrite them so that there's no negative exponents or zero exponents. Okay, we're back. The first expression we have is left parentheses 1.04, right parentheses to the zero power. And anything to the zero power is going to come out one. So that was an easy one. The next one we have is one over 
And in the denominator, we have left parentheses, 0 0.97 right parentheses, and that's raised to the negative first power. So that's one of those that's crying out for help. It's crying, move me. And what's crying out for help? It's the 0 0.97. It wants to go to the numerator. So if you move it up, if you move it to the numerator, it would be 0 0.97 over 1, or just 0 0.97. I'm going to put it in parentheses to the first power just so you can see it a little better. Of course, the first power doesn't really mean anything, so this is just 0 0.97. All right, the next one is x squared times y to the negative third. So again, somebody's crying out for help. It's the y that's crying out for help. The y is saying, move me. So the y wants to move to the denominator. And we would rewrite this as x squared over y to the positive third. Because once we move y, the exponent becomes positive. In the next column, we have left parentheses, four fifths, right parentheses, and that's raised to the negative second power. So now the entire fraction, four fifths, is crying out for help. It says, move me. So move the four down and the five up, giving us five fourths. And once we do that, we've solved the problem. It's happy, so it's a positive two now instead of a negative two. And we could write out what this is. This would be five squared over four squared, which would be 25 sixteenths if we simplify. Okay, now we have left parentheses, 1.075 right parentheses, that's raised to the negative fourth power. There's the move me. It's asking us to move the 1.075. And where will we move it? To the denominator, because right now it would essentially be in the numerator. So we're going to write 1 over left parentheses, 1.075, right parentheses, and that's now to the positive fourth power. We're going to leave it alone at that, uh, because I did say you don't have to evaluate them. And then finally, x squared over y to the negative first. It's the y to the negative first that's crying out for help, move me, and so it needs to go to the numerator. And so if we move it up to the numerator, the x squared is going to stay exactly where it is, and the y to the negative first moves up, becoming positive and happy as y to the first. So x squared y to the first, or just x squared y.